Hey guys, it's Andy. I'm here for uh, something uh, a little unusual for my channel. I'm sure you can see by the title, but basically, like ever since I made my presence on the internet known, I've been asked about my sword collection and uh, never really thought anything about it. Like, I don't find my collection all that impressive, especially compared to some of the collections I've seen on the internet. But as of late, I felt it's time to indulge my audience with a video showcasing all the swords I've collected over the years. I want to give a shout out to Gavin the Noob and Curtis for uh, recommending I make a video about this. I'm sorry it's taken so long, guys, but I've finally gotten around to it. Hope you guys enjoy this. Now let me show you what I got. Before we get into anything too serious, let's start with some training swords. This is a polypropylene European training sword by the now infamous Cold Steel. Look at the tie, dude. The tie is like, it's the perfect circumference of his gooey center, dude. Say what you will about Cold Steel, but when it comes to this sword, I simply have to give it my praises. Ever since I first laid eyes on it, I have loved this sword. The amount of detail that went into making this look and feel like an authentic European sword is simply staggering. This is one of the most recent additions to my collection, having obtained it in 2016. As such, I haven't gotten as much practice as I have with some of my other swords, and definitely not as much practice as I wish I could have. Here's a shot of me trying to fit the whole sword in frame next to me to try to get a good size to scale with, but I end up completely out of frame, so uh, rip. I don't know if it's apparent on video or not, but this sword is actually pretty heavy. So much so that when I first got it, I had trouble swinging it. I've improved at it significantly since then, but it's still not an easy sword to swing around. But if you're looking for a high quality training weapon, I would wholeheartedly recommend this sword to anyone. Next up, I have another polypropylene training sword from Cold Steel, this time in the shape of a katana. I often refer to this as my boken. If you don't know what a boken is, it's the adaptation of the Japanese word bokuto, which is essentially the same thing as this, except they were primarily wooden. During the height of my sword practicing days, back in 2005 and 6, my friend David and I used to constantly practice with wooden bokens. I had always heard of the benefits of polypropylene bokens, but it wasn't until 2016, when I got my other training sword, that I finally got my hands on my first polypropylene boken. And much like my other training sword, I absolutely fell in love with this. I love the amount of detail in this sword to make it look authentic, and I especially love how practical to use it is. One of my favorite things to do is practice with my other sword first, then move on to this one, because the weight difference is so significant that when I swing this sword afterwards, it almost feels weightless in comparison. And finally, we get to my most used training weapon, my Shinai. This is a type of training sword used in the traditional art of Kendo, which is essentially Japanese fencing. I got more than my fair share of practice with a Shinai with my friend David back in 2005 and 6. My original Shinai from back then actually broke. David and I practiced with our Shinai so much that we actually broke them. As you can see, this one isn't exactly in prime condition, but it's much better than my old one was before it bit the dust. I got this one in 2007, and I've been periodically practicing with it with my cousin Luke ever since. The top and bottom of the sword show most signs of wear. The top is missing a significant amount of padding, and each time I strike something with the tip, it only gets worse. The handle, oh boy oh boy, I don't even know where to start. It used to have a solid, comfortable grip, but once it started falling apart, it's just gotten worse. Now every time I hold it, 
I end up with this powdery substance on my hands as it falls apart. I tried to get a good shot of what I mean, but the lighting outside wasn't very good so I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty bad. All that being said though, I still absolutely love this sword. It's incredibly effective for combat practice. It's incredibly effective for combat practice, and I would certainly recommend a Shinai to anyone interested in it. Alright, practice time is over. Let's get into what you all came to see. This first sword is an absolute beauty. I wouldn't technically call it a sword, it's more along the lines of a dagger based on its size, but I couldn't not include it among my collection. I just can't get enough of this audacious design. This is a wicked weapon, no matter how you look at it. The sharp tip, in addition to the triple curve on the edge, give no subtlety when it comes to what this weapon is capable of. Alongside of its wicked propensity to deal damage is an equally intimidating design, featuring that which resembles a dragon, the pommel of the sword bearing the head of a dragon the hilt resembling a wing, while the blade itself appears as that of a flying mythical serpent. The craziest thing about this sword though is that I actually have two of them. This first one was given to me by a friend. He was about to become a father, so he wanted to remove anything like this from his house, so he gave it to me. But then just this past Christmas, I received this one, which is literally the same sword. The only difference is that this one is broke. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually broke or if it just wasn't put together properly, but I can't get it to fit together correctly, so... I've basically been keeping it aside, so in case I ever want to make a video featuring this weapon, and like, in a scene I would want it to break, I could feature both swords in the video. In the scene where I have the broken sword, I could just use this one. And now we come to another dagger. I received this one for Christmas a few years ago, and much like the last dagger, this whole sword just emanates wickedness. Like the last dagger, this one isn't very long but it makes up for that with a powerful double edge with some grueling prongs at the end of the blade. Even the pommel has some blades on it. I don't really know what for, I never really found a practical use for them, in fact they usually get in the way, but still a neat little feature. It also has these hook things attached to it, which I suppose could also double as makeshift weapons but it's primarily to hang the sword from, indicating to me that the main purpose of this dagger is for decoration. That being said though, it's not actually a bad weapon in its own right, all things considered. Now we get to this. To be honest, I have no idea where this sword came from. I have no idea where or when I got it, it's just kind of in my collection. I'm not complaining about it though. It's a bit less detailed than the previous two daggers, but it's still very appealing to the eye in my opinion. It's attached to this chain which I'm assuming is to be used to tidy your belt. Whenever I'm not using it, I wrap it around the hilt to keep it closed. It's about the same length as the other two daggers. I do wish it was a bit longer. 
but I still like the design overall. Next up is this beauty. This one was also given to me by my friend who no longer wanted anything dangerous like this in his house. This is a sword, though it isn't much longer than the previous couple daggers. I really love the design and look of this one. It's got all kinds of details, symbols and stuff. I don't really know what any of them mean. I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> I like this one. I just wish it were a bit longer. As you can see, the edge itself has been dented as if this one was used. None of these indents were my own doing, so I don't know how these battle marks were obtained, but I can only imagine the epic battles that this sword has been through. It feels a little loose when swinging it. I'm almost worried it's gonna fall apart. But that's to be expected from a battle veteran like this. Now let's move on to my Japanese swords. I'm sure you're familiar with this type of stand, featuring slots for three swords. Let me show you the three that I have on mine. This is the first and the shortest among the three swords that came with the stand. As beautiful as this set of swords is, and how much I do like it, I have to comment on the lack of quality of this set. I got this set in about 2003 when I was in middle school from a local flea market. I saw it and on a whim thought, man it would be cool to have swords, and convinced my dad to buy it for me. At the time, this was the coolest thing I could imagine. It's only years later now that I can look back and see just how low quality these swords really are. But that didn't stop me from enjoying them back then, and it doesn't stop me from enjoying them now. The blade itself is beautifully designed. Just ignore the markings from where I tried and failed to sharpen it. And ignore that red stuff too. That actually is blood. It's my own blood though. Back when I got this sword, I thought it would be a good idea to put my own blood on it in case anyone saw the sword and saw the blood, they would have been like, oh wow, this kid doesn't mess around. So anytime I would get cut or something, I'd rush over to the sword and wipe my blood on it. The cringe is getting a little strong now, so uh, I'm gonna move on from those memories. I've used this sword in some of my videos. It's actually pretty good when it comes to cutting things. And despite all the criticism I have about this sword and this set's quality, for a dagger like this, it's actually not too bad. I don't really like calling it a dagger though. I usually call it by its original Japanese name, Tonto. This is the second sword of the set. This is known as a wakizashi, and ever since I got the set, this has been my favorite among the three. I don't know what it was that drew me to this one in particular, but this was my weapon of choice for most of my adolescence. I went on so many adventures with this thing. 
It never really let me down, but because I brought it along with me so much, and because this is such a low quality set, a lot of the sword actually ended up falling apart. I believe the first thing to go was the wrapping around the handle. It was incredibly loose the moment I got it, and every time I put my fingers in it, it would just keep slipping. Eventually it caused this end to pop right off. I believe I ended up gluing it at one point before I realized this end is supposed to come off because that's how you actually tighten the blade. Yes, these blades need tightened occasionally. So aside from that, I also had to glue multiple areas, including the tip of the scabbard, as well as the opening of the scabbard. As for the blade itself, it's just as beautiful as the Tanto. Again, just ignore the modification I made to it, this time being an engraving carved with the Tanto, saying never forget July 17th, 2005, oh no! And for the final sword on the stand, it is not the original third sword of the set. That one met its untimely end. Remember how I said these swords can be tightened? Well, long story short, my friend David was tightening that sword of mine, and it ended up getting too tight <laughs> to the point where it snapped and uh, rip sword. It shall never be forgotten. However, in its place, I have this. The handle of this sword is much better quality than any of the other swords in the set. The wrappings have never come loose, even though the end cap popped off and I can't get it back on. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this is no ordinary katana. Now you can tell there's something off about this sword just by looking at it. If you can't quite put your finger on it, you should check out the series Ruroni Kenshin. It's a story about a traveling swordsman that uses a sakabato, colloquially known as a reverse blade, or a sword with the blade on the back, or the opposite side that it's supposed to be on. Being a huge fan of Aroni Kenshin, I got this sword back in 2006. I didn't have a credit card or even the internet back then, so in order for that to work, I needed to give my friend David the money for him to order it for me. To my understanding, there were two very high quality brother and sister Sakabato available. He had one called the Golden Wave, which as you can imagine, was a gold and I believe red sword incredible quality. I'm talking full tang, battle ready, razor sharp, all that good stuff. And its partner was named the Undertow, which was a jet black sword of equal quality. He had the golden wave, and it only made sense for me to obtain the Undertow. So I shelled out the $150, expecting a product as good as David's golden wave. But instead, what I got was an absolute bottom of the barrel, cheap, probably only used for display version. It very clearly was not the sword I was expecting, but because I was so young and wanted a Sakabato so badly, 
I never questioned David about returning it or trying to get the real version or whatever. Instead, I gave it the benefit of the doubt and actually tried using it in battle. And boy, oh boy, was that a mistake. The handguard became loose. The blade itself became loose. The blade bent. Imagine practicing with the sword, expecting it to be full tang, only to have the blade itself bend. Needless to say, this sword was pretty disappointing. But I used it a lot despite all that. Anytime I needed to film something and needed two swords to fight, I would usually use the reverse blade versus my friends to make sure no one got hurt. Yes, you saw that correctly. The blade just bent after I swung it. I didn't even hit anything. The blade bent from swinging at the air. Uh, someone help me. Up next, we got this. This is another Wakizashi from a set like the one I just had. Only this was originally David's. Remember how I said he snapped my katana from that set? Well, he actually felt so bad about it that he gave me this one, which I felt was pretty cool. I always liked this sword too. And I mean, you can tell it's from one of the same types of sets that I got, just the way it's put together. You can see here it's missing the tip. Like I mentioned, mine fell off. Apparently this one fell off and David never put it back on. It's even got some of the same designs. The wrapping has always been sturdy too, despite not having an end cap. I don't know if David did something, like glued it on or whatever, but it's always been a lot better than mine. The bottom of the blade actually has a decent edge, but you don't have to go up very far to start seeing signs of battle. This thing got absolutely battered throughout the years. It's hard to even fathom how it could have gotten this bad. But eventually because it got so bad, this just took on the role of a practice sword. This would also be the sword my friends would end up using during movies I would film, where I would be using the Sakabato, whereas my friends could use this without having to worry about anyone getting hurt or any swords getting hurt. This is my final katana. I got it in 2009 for Christmas, and ever since I saw it, I've just been blown away by the quality. The scabbard itself has a brilliant shine, as well as some interesting designs. The sword itself seems to be embodying that of a dragon or a serpent. The tip of the scabbard featuring that of a dragon head, as well as the pommel. Even the handle itself is this scaly substance that I've been told is actually snakeskin, but I'm not sure about that. You know that saying, the brain named itself? Well, the same kind of applies to this sword. One day while just looking at it, the name Zontoshi came to me, and ever since then I've just called this the Zontoshi sword. Thank you. 
The blade itself is just incredible. The beautiful design along the edge, high quality build. You can just imagine how ecstatic I was upon receiving this after basically only having those low quality set swords for the longest time. This is probably the highest quality sword I own, not just design wise, but this also feels the most sturdy and most usable in battle. There's only one problem. The handguard of this sword has this inexplicable design. Like the rest of the sword, it's trying to embody that of a snake or a serpent. So it has this interesting design that looks nice, but it's completely impractical to use. The way it bends makes it completely impossible to hold it naturally with my right hand. Only if I use my left hand and wrap my thumb around it can I even hold the sword. And even then it kind of defeats the purpose of a handguard if your thumb is exposed, so I really don't get this. When drawing the blade out of habit, I try to hold it naturally, even though I know I can't hold it that way, so I need to adjust my hands. It's a pretty awkward sword to handle, unfortunately. I still love it, though. I'm afraid that's all of my Japanese swords. But I do have one sword left. I believe this is a Chinese sword. At least that's what my friend David told me and he's the one who gave it to me, so... The scabbard has a nice design, featuring that of a dragon shooting a fireball out of its mouth. It's roughly the size of my daggers, maybe a little longer. Speaking of the scabbard, it's a little loose. Sometimes it just falls off the sword. The handle is a little minimalistic too, especially compared to the last few swords we've looked at. The blade itself really isn't anything special in retrospect, but I've always loved the look of this thing. The shine it gives off, the groove down the center, Looking at this was always so appealing to me. It's got some battle damage, got a few nicks here and there. Not as bad as some of my other swords, but this has been through some battles. It's pretty light too, so it's always been really fun for me to just swing around. Alright, you guys want to know the truth about this sword? Well, the fact is, it isn't really a sword at all. This is a Chinese spear. It is the longest weapon that I own. It's so long that I have trouble finding spots to practice with it. This is the most epic weapon in my collection. 